Hello again. The Covid business came as a great blessing to many people in government, whether those at Westminster or the ones running our town halls. It was found that people will do quite literally anything they are told by the authorities. Tell them they can't sunbathe on the beach? Yep, that works. Forbid them from going for a walk in the countryside? Yeah, no problem. Ban them from having the family round at Christmas? Yeah, they'll accept that and do as they're told. <laughs> Mustn't go to church? No, that's fine. Stay at home? Curfew? Yep. Great. This was a really marvellous discovery, and the only question to ask was, how can we use this information to control people once the threat of the virus has faded? The answer is, of course, climate change and the desire to protect our children's future. Tell them that they must stay cold indoors because otherwise they'll wreck the planet. What about persuading folk that driving cars all over the place is a selfish action and destroys rainforests and kills polar bears and so on? That might work. This kind of thinking has led to the creation of the concept of the 15-minute city, the ultimate in control of ordinary people's lives. The motor car has brought freedom and independence to ordinary people in Britain. Before it became widespread, a lot of people used to live and work within walking distance of their homes. As late as the 1960s, there were a lot of people who walked to work at a local factory or shop and only left their district on rare days out or annual holidays. The car changed all that and it gave the ability for people to broaden their horizons a little. Of course, as their physical horizons widened, so too did their mental outlook change as well. Now, the intention is to reverse all this and turn back the clock so that people once again walk to work locally and do not leave their area except on rare occasions. Once again, their physical horizons will be limited and restricted. All this is to be done in the name of climate change and the environment, but that's really a Trojan horse to reduce our freedom. A population which seldom leaves the local neighbourhood is more manageable and less likely to be milling about all over the place and going the Lord knows where. Oxford and Canterbury have been chosen to try out this scheme. Cities will be divided into zones so that you can get anywhere you really need to go within 15 minutes or so walking. If you drive out of your zone too often, you'll be fined. The idea is to stop people driving about freely. Already we're seeing a similar thing on the edge of London. The low emissions zone is being extended to the whole of Greater London soon. And so somebody living in Buckhurst Hill, say, on the edge of Essex, will be fined for driving to Woodford, which is in London. It will combine with other schemes, such as the one planned for Epping Forest, in which those who drive in the road near the forest will also be fined. I realise that this all sounds like a fantasy, but I give links in the description to this video so that viewers can check it out. Very soon, somebody driving from Epping, which is at one end of the central line, London Underground, to, say, Leighton in East London, will incur two stiff fines, one from Epping Forest Council for driving through the forest and the other from the London Authority for driving through London. <coughs> This is what life will soon be like in Oxford and Canterbury as they set up their 15-minute cities. These bonkers plans have nothing at all to do with the desire to prevent air pollution and reduce the use of fossil fuels to slow climate change. They are, as I say, designed to make us all stay in one place and stop wandering around the country at will as though we have a perfect right to go where we please. The Net Zero Agenda and the various green initiatives look very ethical and seem, on the face of it, designed to save our planet, but at the back of them is the desire of government to control the citizenry. It's not easy to rule a country where people are always gadding about the place and going anywhere at any time. The old Soviet Union uh, leaders there didn't used to like this idea and they managed to put a stop to it. They used very similar methods to control people in just the same way as is now being done in this country. There were almost no private cars, which meant that if somebody wanted to visit another city, 
it had to be done by public transport. There were internal passports, which meant that the state could decide if you could make that journey or not, and that the police would know when and where you were travelling. So if you wanted to go from Moscow to Leningrad, you would have to get a ticket, the government would know about it, you'd get a stamp and all the rest of it. That was the only way that you could get about, by letting the government know what you were up to, where you were going and how long you'd be there. By imposing an increasingly hefty series of fines in this country for using cars and making life more and more difficult for car users, owning a car will eventually only be for the wealthy or those in official government positions. Everybody else will have to use public transport and with the cashless society it will be impossible to travel anonymously by train or coach. The state will know every time you leave your district. As I say, just like the Soviet Union, but the illiberal process will be disguised behind a desire to care for the environment. It's brilliant. This, of course, is why climate change is being pushed by the present government, because it can be used for all kinds of useful things such as this.